Okay, so techniques and nuances of piano performance. What, what does that even mean? It's worth remembering, most of us when we say technique, what are we thinking? Are we thinking of playing fast and loud and, and all of that? That's not really what technique means. In the classical Greek, the word technique comes from the word techne. And techne doesn't actually mean speed or facility or anything like that. It means art, the art of doing something. So what, uh, what does that mean when we say what is technique when applied to a musical instrument? Well, really, technique then is imagination. Imagine a sound. Imagine it in your head, just there. A piano sound, a scale, whatever. That's the first most important thing about technique. Done. So you've imagined that sound. Now, what we then have to do is adapt this thing, our bodies, to this thing, our piano, in order to create that thing, the imaginative sound. That is what technique really is. And a really good technique is one which, in the middle of a concert, has an idea, a brilliant idea, and immediately transfers that idea through the body, to the instrument, to the listener. That, in its true sense, is what a technique actually is. So we need to think about how we can develop technique. Fine. First of all, we need to develop imagination. We need to listen to as many performers of our instrument, the piano or whatever, as possible, to hear the possibilities. How does he, you know, what sound does that person make there? What sound does that person make there? What's the color? What's the combination? When we hear those things, we expand our vision. We expand what we think is possible. And by so doing, that promotes our imagination. Just as to be a great writer, you need to have read so many books to help promote your writing imagination. To be a great painter, you need to have seen huge numbers of paintings and visual stimuluses so that you then can create your own much better, much more extraordinary, much more personal visions. This is very important. So first of all, you need to listen to so many things. Secondly, sometimes we need to imagine away from the piano with our score just in an armchair, just here, piano shut, and I'm watching my score, reading my score, and imagining the sounds. Because this piano might be one piano, a different piano sounds different, a different hall, Carnegie Hall, sounds very different. But here, this is what I'm aiming for. So I'm listening, I'm reading my book, my score, I'm imagining what sounds could be possible, how I could make the most fabulous sounds at this bar here. That's ideal. That's the ideal world here. And then I have to see about making them on this piano, on that piano, on another piano. Perhaps they won't be as perfect in the real world as they were in my head. That's fine. So then we've dealt with the nuances, the approaches. I am now ready to play the piano. The first thing is I must be sitting comfortably. I must be sitting with good posture, open, upright, relaxed, no tension in the arms. This is very, very important. Only then can I actually play the piano well without blocking both my physical and my emotional, intellectual, imagination uh, tenets. All of these things must be free to flow and to communicate. Very important. After that, the playing of the piano is pretty easy. What do we have to do? We have to take this thing and put it down. The faster we put that note down, the louder it will be. The slower, the less loud it will be until some point where we do it too slowly and the hammer cannot hit the string. The hammer has to be thrown to hit the string. Without enough speed, that cannot happen. So this is a very simple device. So what do I need to do? I need to train each one of my fingers to press the note at sufficient speed to make a sound and then all of the other speeds, faster and slower, to make all the different sounds. That's the first thing. So I need to make sure that each finger can do that. All the fingers working perfectly without moving anything else, calmly, as you can see. Nothing else is moving, just my fingers. Then sometimes, I need to use other parts. For instance, I might have chords. And I need to use my wrist. So I need to make sure that can work. 
and I might need to find, make sure the wrist and the fingers can work together. Okay? So that's two movements, finger movement, wrist movement. And then finally, sometimes we need full arm movement. Watch. For good power, I'm going to use that. Occasionally, I might even use some more of that. That's essentially the full basics of piano playing. Being able to move each of my fingers individually, my wrist individually. Sometimes we need to do this. That movement. Sometimes I need to do this. Um, this and this. That's, that's piano technique. And the important thing is, can you do them all freely and easily, without tension, without suddenly jabbing your arm, without this feel like this? Absolute flow. How do we achieve that? Well, mostly we achieve this through calm, slow practice. If I've got a passage, I need to be able to play it at all the speeds. If I can play it at 100% of the speed, I need to be able to play it at 80%. 70%, 60%, 30% of the speed. And it may be that I start slowly, but the most important thing is that I think this is calm, this is relaxed. Then I need to play a bit faster. Then maybe a bit faster. And there'll come a time where I'm going faster than my brain can think. And that's not good because then I can't be calm. So I must always be practicing in a way that everything is relaxed, but my brain is always thinking of the next thing. And that is really what technique is about. That way we can move around in combination very, very well. But of course, also, there are many combinations. We might play in thirds. So that's a really interesting bit of coordination. And what's happening there is my fingers have to go down at exactly the right time, but then occasionally I have to turn. So there's a lot of coordination happening there. And in order to do that well, I have to make sure it's perfect at the slow speed. And at the faster speeds. But the thing is, if I do it like this, that's rubbish, isn't it? Because I'm not being efficient. I'm sticking my fingers up in the air. I'm wasting time and energy. I need to make sure that it's all calm and as efficient as possible. Only then can I actually play fast. So these are the key things. People trying to th think that it's just fast and loud or whatever. This is not the case. What real technique is about is playing the piano efficiently without wasting energy or time and being in total control of everything you do. Because ultimately, if you get your brain to tell your fingers to play every single note individually and tell them exactly a bit softer, a bit louder, a bit softer, a bit louder, then you have total control of the instrument. And that is a technique because that allows you to express exactly what it is that you're trying to say.